Got another diagnostic challenge here. It's a 2022 Chevy Equinox with a reported cranks and no start or cranks for a really long time starts and dies after you drive maybe 20 feet. So essentially the engine does not start and run. So before I try to start it, I'm gonna check codes because I like to collect information. I'm starting this diagnostic out in the parking lot because this was a drop-in. Probably the third sad story of the day about how this is their only car and they need it looked at right away, etc., etc. So uh, I'm basically just doing a quick triage before I go back to my other jobs, my other repairs that I'm working on. So what do we have? Okay, well the engine did actually start and run. So I may get lucky and be able to drive it into the shop. Oh, spoke too soon. Yeah, well, looks like we're gonna be pushing it. I'm not doing anything, by the way. This is just, this is the computer deciding, ah, I'm gonna try and start it. I did not, of course, record that, but I just was able to start it up and run it just long enough to get barely within the doorway to where I can now push it by hand. So here's what I have for a code ECM P129F. I have actually been seeing this code here and there and been replacing fuel pump driver modules for this code, also for these exact same symptoms. Vehicle has about 22,120 miles on it, and yeah, I've been seeing some low mileage failures of the fuel pump driver control module. So we'll see which direction this one goes. Okay, so check out the schematic here. Fuel pump driver control module. Here's the fuel pump itself. This is a three phase 12 volt motor. So we cannot test it in the old conventional way. We can't just jump power and ground across to the pump motor. We can't just put a test light across the wires and, and get it to light up. It doesn't work that way. So we actually have to test it uh, a different way. Uh, the engine control module communicates what it wants to the fuel pump driver control module first off. So the fuel pump driver control module just does what it's told over the network. So we've got power at all times, ground at all times, uh, communication circuits, and then we need to verify these circuits here between the module and the fuel pump are okay, meaning none of these three wires are touching each other, touching ground or touching power. So that's basically all you can do when you test the system. And it's either gonna be a bad module, a bad pump or faulty wiring. Let's take a look at low pressure fuel system data. That would be our fuel supply system up to the high pressure fuel system. So we've got fuel pump speed in RPMs. There should be a fuel pump desired, etc. cetera. Uh, the fuel pump speed command is 6,500 RPM and the fuel pump actual speed is zero RPM. So that would explain why the engine is failing to start, failing to run, probably gonna die any second now. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it just died. Okay. We've got a fuel pump that is failing to operate, failing to move. Okay, now remember, I was communicating to the engine control module with the scan tool, so that data that I received from him was first communicated from the fuel pump driver uh, module. So we can only trust that data as it's sent to him and then sent to us. Let's talk about the actual service information test process uh, for a second here. Step one, disconnect fuel pump driver control module and the fuel pump. Okay, well, there's a problem here. The fuel pump itself takes a minimum of two hours to remove the, all the components necessary to get to it, right? What if it's not the fuel pump? Who's paying for that? General Motors doesn't pay for that under warranty. They don't, they don't pay for that kind of thing. Not as far as I know. Uh, so I, I've done my own little strategy here and it's worked out for me in the past. Maybe I'll try it here because uh, truthfully, I don't have enough time to put this vehicle on the rack 
for two hours and tear it all apart just to get an answer. Uh, and because the last time I did that, the answer was that the fuel pump was just fine and I wasted my time. So service information wants us to disconnect this end, disconnect this end, and essentially test the wiring end to end and test for any shorts. So uh, if I were to able to get to the fuel pump driver control module a lot easier than the tank, which I know for sure you can get to this a lot easier, disconnect this end and then use my own meter to test is there a short on each of these wires? Are they touching each other? Are they touching ground? Are they touching power? If the answer to all of those questions is no, then it's probably not the wiring and it's probably, probably not the pump, okay? So at that point, yeah, like I said, I've replaced the fuel pump driver control modules before and that ended up fixing it. Uh, I think I only replaced one pump so far. That was actually the cause of the problem. Here's the thing, that feels a lot like guessing and I don't like to guess, so maybe there's a better way. Perhaps I could install the PicoScope on each of these three channels and then attempt to start the engine and we will see if there's a signal coming out of the fuel pump driver control module, because then you would know, right? That would prove whether the module is even trying to run the pump. That's my theory, at least. Okay, so I've pushed things around. I've got this car staged to be lifted so I can do some testing. This was sad story number three. Uh, they got put into a loaner car, so now this is uh, no longer a real urgent job. Like I said, anyway, I was doing an automotive triage and in that triage, I determined that the, uh, the vehicle requires more testing, more time, and potentially more parts than I can take care of in this one day and solve your crisis in a timely fashion. So, like I said, no longer urgent. I'm gonna move on and then return to this one. Okay, so here's where the fuel pump driver control module lives. Give me a second to remove that shield. Give me some better access. And remember, service information wants me to disconnect this connector and the fuel pump connector up on top of the tank. Well, this is a saddle tank. We've got uh, all wheel drive rear drive unit. We've got exhaust system. All that stuff's in the way of coming out, you know, getting this tank out. That's at least a two hour job minimum. this pop. There we go. Okay, let me uh, go identify which terminals are which and we'll do our test. Okay, so it looks like we are after terminal 8, 9, and 24 is our th three phase uh, 12 volt motor. So I'm going to just start there. Ohm meter, and then I'm going to make sure that there's no continuity. First off, I'm going to make sure my tool's working. I'll have to find a way to hang that up. Of course, I forgot that the uh, display is removable on this meter. Make sure the meter's working. Sure is. Let's go on terminal eight test continuity eight to nine half an ohm eight to twenty four half an ohm then nine to eight half an ohm nine to twenty four half an ohm let's do the same thing on twenty four twenty four to nine half an ohm 24 to 8 half an ohm. So we all got the same measurements and this is what I typically see when I do it this way. So uh, next, what I think I will do is check for any continuity to ground. So I've got my power probe hooked. There's a long wire connected to the battery. 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check for continuity to ground, continuity to power. We've got no continuity on terminal 8. Do the same thing on 9. No continuity. No continuity. Same thing on 24. No continuity. Okay, let's talk about the results real quick on the schematic. Okay, so I tested each of these wires, so the three phases, 8, 9, and 24, I tested them to each other, and I got about the same value between all of them, so that really suggests that this pump is okay. It means that there's, you know, if we're getting a half an ohm from here and here, here and here, or there and there, there and there, they're all the same, essentially, so that really suggests the pump is not the problem. We know the wiring is not shorted to power, which is not shorted to ground, and it's not shorted to each other. We don't know that these are open, but uh, we also don't have any fault codes stored. So the fuel pump driver control module has not stored any codes or set any codes for, hey, this is open, this has got a problem. It says fuel pump performance. It means the fuel pump's not doing what I told him to do. So this suggests a faulty fuel pump driver control module. And like I said, I've replaced several now and it's been a successful repair. So let's continue. Okay, so all I did was I just gently pried right there and on the other side and it came right off. And then I'm gonna have to snip that little zip tie and replace it when I'm done. Get that out of the way. Now we should be able to reconnect that and now have access to our three fuel pump wires on the back of there. Okay, I am tapped into our three phases of the 12 volt motor. Let's go fire up the picoscope and see what happens. Okay, so I've got my three phases, blue, red, and green. They are all measuring the exact same right now, so you can't see the different colors. Uh, when I first connected, they were all sitting at zero, and then the moment that I opened up the driver's door, it shot up to, what, 3.5 volts? So let me go ahead and try and start the engine, and we'll see if that pump model even tries to do anything. Now, the engine started and ran. That doesn't mean it's actually, you know, good. It has been doing that the whole time. But no, this module does not appear to be doing... You know, it's not trying to do anything with the, with the uh, fuel pump. The module's not trying to do anything with the fuel pump. Okay, so just imagine a scenario where I happen to have a known good fuel pump driver control module. And perhaps because this model does not need programming to operate on the vehicle, and I do happen to have a known good fuel pump driver control module, maybe it wouldn't hurt to just plug it in, see what happens, All right? Let me hook my uh, back probes back up and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, I've got our back probes back on here. This was a brand new module, by the way, that somebody was gonna throw away and they ended up giving it to me as a test device. So now I have it. Maybe this time you'll get to see what it looks like when I touch the driver's door. Oh yeah, that already looks a little bit different, doesn't it? It's uh, still resting at the same voltage, but I saw some more activity than I did last time. Well, I guess that confirms it. We have a faulty fuel pump driver control module and we found a better way to test than factory service information was trying to tell us to do. Now let me run that and pause it. So now I know that it would be a waste of my time to remove the fuel tank and uh, screw with the fuel pump. So let me pause that. Of course, it's not going to want to pause, is it? It's not cooperating. Okay, let's do a windowed zoom. 
Let's just pick a spot on the waveform. You can see our three phases. Remember, this is uh, unfiltered. I don't have any filters applied, so it's gonna look nasty. Let's uh, undo that. But yeah, you can see it's working. The three phases are toggling on and off. If we wanted to, we could make this pattern look way better, way nicer, but I've already proven what it's gonna take to fix this car, and I don't need to go any further. So I hope that was helpful for somebody. Uh, that's my little test method on how to get away with not removing the fuel tank and wasting your time. Thanks for watching.